Viewers, listeners, welcome to another edition of Blighty Talks Bricks. I don't know if I'm actually sad, happy or just relieved. Uh, this episode is the final episode of season one. Uh, it's been a journey, and, uh, but what I am really pleased about, I'm really excited about, I'm actually finishing this journey of season one with the two guys that I started it with. They're both really impressive guys they're good friends of mine one's my son as well but these were the inspiration behind blighty talks bricks uh, if i'm honest and it's been their confidence in me uh, their support on this journey that i've been able to do something that i'm not naturally comfortable doing so it gives me great pleasure to introduce to the rap edition uh, harry blight and finley rowden guys how are you welcome well, thanks very much and may i say congratulations because the first series is done and dusted. And I think well, there's been a few months in the making, or it was obviously it's been a longer than that in the making, but um, you've like come a long way. It's a, not an easy thing to do. Uh, it's out of anyone's comfort zone, I think. So um, to see it, the high quality of it speaks volumes of you, your guests, and the team behind the scenes. It's um, Thank you, Finn. I'm, I'm good as well, thanks. And you, yeah. <laughs> really, I thought the first episode was the best episode. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's... Um, that's me being a little bit biased, but I think yeah. you're right. Um, yeah. I think, to, to quote yourself, you've um, taken to it like a duck out of water, um, <laughs> which it is out of yeah, water I sometimes. Know, I, know. It's a duck. I know, I get, my, I get it wrong. I get it wrong. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just wanted to flag that up very quickly. <laughs> and then I think, Finn, over to you. You've got a couple of questions. Yeah, I just thought, I thought that with the guests, such a wide variety of guests as well, which I, I think is always, A, keeping it interesting, um, expanding, broadening the, the target audience. Um, but you've had sports people, you've had obviously industry experts in the property industry, uh, you've had a wellness, well-being guru, I'm sure I'm missing people out as well. But um, there's been core themes to it, property being one, sports, charity, interests, mental well-being. But um, I, thought, I think the w range of guests helped it as well. For sure. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's probably like a, a green grocer. You're only as good as the, the, the food you put out on the, on the shelves. And the guests we've had have been top quality. Mm. You know? and, I, and I use the, the emphasis of top human beings. They've been lovely. Um, and it's been, that side of it's been really easy for me. It's been a pleasure. And they've just made it a breeze, for sure. Did you know them all before you met them? No. There's been some new ones on there. Um, some I've known for many years. But no, there's been some new people on there. And even the new people, that, you know, I probably have a 10 or 15 minute telephone conversation with them a few days before we record. But you can just get the vibe that they're, they're good people. Mm. You know, and I'm that, that East End upbringing and, you know, you know a wrong one. Yeah. Uh, and, and the people I've had on this show have been absolutely first class and it's been, been my privilege that they've been able to have the time they're all busy people the other thing i would say is that we don't pay anyone we haven't got any money so yeah, we can't pay yeah. Anyone. um and even the people i'm asking to come on you know the, the celebrities it's i'm honored that they've actually said they're going to make the time to come on and, yeah and the, the the celebrities and sports stars we've had on so far as i say they're not getting paid anything they're doing it because they understand what we're trying to achieve here and <laughs> they have got good stories and they're just lovely people. It's, and I'm truly humbled. I think that speaks volumes of you as well as a character. I think the DJ Spoony in, I think it's episode two, yeah. um, calls you one of his favourite people in the world. I mean, you get a compliment like that from that's a man like that, that's um, saying something. And I think what's nice as well and refreshing is people have been so open about their mental health or how they, um, how they preserve their mental well-being. And you've been brilliant with it. Um, and I know that was a, a key objective at the start, but it's not easy. No, it's, that's, I mean, you know, Harry has been, obviously being my son, he's been on a journey with me for many years. And that bit was hard. Um, I've actually been taken aback by the amount of people that have reached out on mental and emotional wellness conversations, mm. be it in to do with... Uh, addictions, drink, uh, be it to do with just depression and anxiety. I mean, I have 
again, I've been truly humbled with some of the people that have reached out to explain what they're going through. Yeah. Uh, and the one thing that I take from this is that however bad you're feeling, you're never alone. As long as you know you've got the challenge. Yeah. I think Anna Marie Goff thing. said, no feeling's permanent, didn't she, at the end? Yeah. Um, and I think uh, I think that speaks volumes. I think you need... I th- what's interested me, I think this podcast in general like I say a wide target audience but I think it's perfect for the 24 to 40 year old market men and women because it is about everyone wants to get on the housing ladder at our age Um, mental well-being is important obviously you've got your interest with sports Um, and I think that's that's a key target market I think it's interesting I mean I think when you know Corn Matiga has done an amazing job Shout um, out, shout out. Putting this um, podcast together. I mean, our inspiration behind lots of the things here, along with you guys, has been great. As as the support from everyone in the office, as my family, as my wife Emma, you know, Emma deals with this Fruit Loop um, on a daily basis. Doesn't get paid. Does She doesn't <laughs> get Well, I'm not sure about that. One, no, you're right, she doesn't get paid. Um, no, it's the support I've had um, from all of those people I've just mentioned has been unbelievable really has mm. um, and it is truly it's it, it shocked me when people started emailing me what's happening getting hold of people to mm. finding ways to get to me just to talk and just to to run through their feelings so you know that's, that's definitely a big plus side yeah I think as well and it's it's a little thing but it's it's sort of like you say people sort of identifying with it it's the way that you've been able to identify with all your guests so just listing off your feeler top in episode two, your brick yes. shirt, your dry robe, yeah. um, wearing a Southampton shirt, a fishing vest, a rugby shirt, presenting a check. Where next? What's coming out of the series two wardrobe? <laughs> but also, do you think those little things have really had an effect or are they sort of little gags for the camera? No, um, I think it, none of them are meant to be gags. They're meant to be... Uh, as I've, I've mentioned a few times, an icebreaker um, to get a smile. It's, it is a serious podcast, you know, mm. as, as much as we want to have a laugh. Yeah. It is a serious podcast. I am passionate about the industry. I am really worried about the housing crisis we have. Uh, and I've said this a few times on various podcasts. My sell-by date's gone. I'm over the hill. I'm a dinosaur. I'm not worried about me now. I'm worried about, you know... And, and even to the extent, I'm not worried about you guys. I think the problem we've got is bad, but it's going to get worse. I'm worried about grandchildren. So it is a serious podcast. But I don't want it to be depressing. I don't want it to be miserable. I don't want it to be uh, a, a situation where we're attacking organisations because we don't think they're being proactive. Yep. Um, it's it's an icebreaker. And and in some situations, it's a respect, really. You know, it's, it's wearing... Um, something that they can identify with that they might have been good at or something that they use in their daily life. Uh, I never like the, thought... I like the cap, by the Thanks way. very much, from Ed um, and No, so it's it's not meant to be anything other than um, me putting my hand out. As I say, don't pay them any. It's me putting my hand, a friendship out, and saying, thank you for coming on. Yeah. We've got some, you know, again, some fantastic leaders of the industry coming on. Uh, and maybe I should shout out to LinkedIn, you know. I think that's one of the... Um, big platforms where we have daily business conversations. You know, if if you do watch on or listen through the LinkedIn situation, I'd love you to reach out and contact us. You know, if you're involved in the property industry of any age, I'd really okay. love you to Definitely. come and talk to us because I'd love you to come and sit with me and, and have a chat, be it for it, be it against it. But no, I'm disappointed. And, you know, the HBF are great on stats and facts. They didn't want to send anyone on. Um the housing minister, he's, oh, he's probably a long-serving housing minister now, <laughs> um, he hasn't replied to my letter for a conversation and I basically said I'd go anywhere to have that conversation and it's not a witch hunt. Um, I've been a bit cheeky, I've written to the shadow housing minister uh, but in that letter I've stuck a £5 note <laughs> um, and I work on that principle on the basis that they'll have to answer it Otherwise, it could be assumed that it's bribery and corruption. So yeah. I'm expecting my fiver back at some <laughs> point in the not-too-distant future. And you never know. Um, Angela Rayner might actually be happy to come and sit down and have a cup of water or a cup of coffee with me and have a chat. That would be entertaining. Well, yeah. oh, what would you wear for that? 
And that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I'll, a rose, I'll wear a shirt with roses on it. Yeah, and that's it, a good answer. Yeah. Good answer. So no, the intention is to carry that on, but it's it, what wearing those shirts or doing the things we do, it's, it's a token. Yeah. Mm. And you've had 10 episodes in the series one? Series one, this is the 10th episode. episode. So you guys started with the unveiling. Uh, this is the 10th one. <laughs> I don't know why we set ourselves a tall order of saying that we're going to do 50 episodes in a year. Um, and, and the reason that's a tall order, I don't know 50 people. So uh, <laughs> that's why I'm reaching out. To yeah. LinkedIn, 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 please, yeah. Yeah. please. Otherwise, it's going to be a repeat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to come back. Season 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 get someone three. to dub it in another yeah. language. Yeah, I hope somebody's not ill because that will really bugger <laughs> up my stats. But um, no, so, you know, I really, I'm, I'm reaching out and I'm asking people to, you know, come on and, and have a chat. You've seen, if you've watched a couple of them, you, you've seen the format. The other thing I'd say is that they're not live. Yeah. They're recorded live like we're doing now, but they're yeah. not live. We we have the opportunity. Live episode, so go, Coral. <laughs> so, yeah. We, we have we have the opportunity of edit. We don't edit much, to be perfectly yeah. honest, because it's not about that. You know, anything that the people I know that are lovely people, they're not going to say things unless they believe in it. Yeah. They're mm. not going to make statements that they're not prepared, if you like, to back up. And and I use that that terminology. It's not a witch hunt at all. It's it's about getting debate. It's about getting the housing crisis, charities, yep. emotional well-being in the public eye to talk about it. And and you say, the, you know, I didn't finish my point, Finn, sorry, when you mentioned about the audience. Uh, Coral does actually tell me that the, the main part of our audience is between um, 24 to 40-year-old people. Oh, so yeah. Uh, mixed, mixed. I think it's been mainly men, but we, you know, we've, we're having more... Um, We'll, we'll have it. I mean, if ET lands a spaceship in um, Hackney Road, we've he's coming nice. and Blight talks <laughs> if, if he wants to come and be nice, he can come and sit here. And I, I don't know what I'll wear for him. But <laughs> probably I'll get him a telephone so he can call home. But, um, you know, it's it's not about that. It's yeah. about actually just getting a an adult debate to talk about things yeah. that matter, not just to me. They should matter to everyone. And a stupid question, but it's not obviously going to be easy. But have you found it easier as the series has gone on or is it still always out of the comfort zone and I think I said to you just before we sat down and I'm, I'm maybe not alone here I really don't like the way I look I really tell me about it I really don't like the way I sound um and so the thought of me doing this 50 times and then actually because then I have to re-watch it oh. um have you rewatched every episode yeah I have I have to I have to watch the edit I have to watch it um and I don't like that. I don't. I, I just don't like the way I look and sound. So that's troublesome to me. The easy part it doesn't get easier. The easy part is like you guys. You're you're great. My guests are great. It's easy. It's easy because they're easy. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not searching for things to say or to talk to them about. And it, it just it becomes easy that way. But no, I don't enjoy it. And you know, I think Harry and Coral both know. Um, there are some times I'm not really looking forward to it. But mm. I believe in the end goal. Yeah. And I believe that we we need to stand up and, and the industry needs to look after itself. And we need to get the public to understand what troubles we've got coming if we carry on with the present policies that we've got at the moment. Yeah. I th have you been watching every episode in the I've background? I've been at most of the live recordings, but there's been a couple that I've missed uh, for various commitments that I've seen, but I think definitely sort of clinging to that last point there, particularly Chris and, and Peter, the points that they made about that were, from an industry point of view, really interesting. That, you know, something has to change. Um, and it's how it changes that's going to be the crucial thing. Does the... I was thinking about this the other day. I think in DJ Spoonie's... Uh, podcast you talked about the Englishman and the castle and we talked about it on the first podcast and that's been a running theme that in this country it's not like a European model where we do have a, a, an affection towards owning a property um, I'm challenging you here I, I'm slightly playing devil's advocate but is that healthy that everyone should own a property and uh, everyone should be aiming to own their own property or, or is rental an option obviously it's an option but is it 
should we be more focusing on rental model, like the German model? Or I, I, I think it, I think we're in a world where things are evolving and changing. For me, it really doesn't matter whether you rent or you buy. What matters is that you've got a roof over your head and you've got security and some comfort. Yeah. Um, I think we're fascinated by property in this country, but I'm not st stuck on owning property. Uh, and I think that it doesn't matter which way it comes. What we've got at the moment is we won't have the choice of either because mm. we just won't have enough. And that's the challenge. But you're right, yeah, there is a, an old school situation. Um, you know, Great Britain is a multicultural international country. You know, London, Paris, New York, they're owned by the world. It's not what it was back in the 16th century. Yeah. So I think we've, we're ready for change. There's, you know, we're involved as a business trying to do some deals where the build re to rent model is there. So, but what we do need is we need the homes. Mm. So it doesn't matter which way it comes, we need them. Yeah, and the support for it, whether that be public support, the sort of the funding, the financial support, it has to be there. And at the moment, it seems like it's sort of... And, and you know, Peter, Peter Trust, got, who I've known for many years and respect greatly, made a great point. You know, the industry builds and provides houses, but it doesn't make people. We have 70 million of us here already. Yeah. yeah. That number's only going up. Yeah, that we're, so I'm, I'm repeating myself. Told you I haven't got enough friends, didn't I? Um, <laughs> we we don't have enough property. It's as simple as that. Where are we going to live? Yeah, it's up, go on, sorry. I was going to say, sticking with with Peter, um, and then across some of the other guests, it was quite interesting for me to hear their different routes into the industry. And I was talking with with one of our recruiters about it sort of saying that there are so many ways into the industry, but it seems like a lot of those are sort of now sort of slowly dying out and that diversity within the industry is diminishing as a result because it's now more of a Red Brick University graduate scheme thing rather than getting into the industry, having worked at, I don't know, an advertising office or I think in Pete's example, he was in the job centre. Um, do you think that is something that we need to talk about more as well? I think, you know, we we are finishing this season with the nation in recession. Um, the house building industry and the construction industry are both in crisis. You know, the amount of... A, a number came the other day, f I think it's just under 4,500 uh, construction businesses went into administration in the last calendar year. When you go into recession, when you go into tough times, investment gets stopped. And then it stops the entrepreneurial ways yeah. of actually trying to drag somebody into your business or trying to follow, whether it's a graduate way. It doesn't matter which way it is, but the, more, the less money we have, the less routes and avenues yeah. that we can have for people to come into that. And also, why would you come into that, you know? Um, I was playing golf at the weekend with a guy that he runs a small plumbing and um, electric heating business. Uh, he's been around for many, many years, very good. It's the first time he doesn't have any work on yeah. in his lifetime. He's in his 50s. Yeah. W what does that mean? He's going to lay people off. Yeah. He's not going to take that Steve Blight school leaver that left school with nothing, who's a bit of a cheeky wick. Yeah. He's not going to take him on because he hasn't got the money to pay him to actually drive around in the van and help him. So it, 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 everything becomes even more negative. Yeah. The people that have lost their jobs, sadly, we see it with our recruitment business. We've seen it a lot with our recruitment business. Not only are they now not paying tax, but it won't be long before they'll be on benefits. Yeah. So it's a yeah. double whammy. Yeah. You know, wha whatever way you follow it, it just keeps going yeah. to the wrong place, Armageddon. And... That, that's sad. And uh, talking about other guests, Anna Maria, who I thought was a superb guest, Anna Maria Goff, um, just a very different episode. Um, I've breathing for me. I'm, I'm trying to get into these ice. Does showers, it every day? He does it every day. Ice showers, and it is just I can't do it. But breathing is the secret. Do you do ice baths every day? 
No. No. Um, well, that's not this. <laughs> no. So, listen, I've got a tub. I've got this tub at home. My wife uses it every day. Um, I find it too tough. I, I go once a week to cryotherapy, which is a bit like, I used the word bee jams the other day, and it's only old people got their head around that, but Iceland... Is that Iceland still about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit like you opening their biggest, deepest freezer and just walking in and standing in it with a woolly hat on for five minutes. That's effectively what it's like. And that is something I can tolerate and deal with. When I'm getting into water that's like two, three degrees now. I'm, I'm, I'm I've been done both. I think the cry is a bit of a cop out. Is it easier? Oh, no, he's, yeah, he's, on, his, he's on some silly mission. At the moment. He's, he's smashing oh, the ice off We need to talk these. about this because... Ice bath every day. The last the time you weren't drinking, the last time we we did the first podcast, for the first podcast episode, um, you're not drinking for seventy five days. So I've got just under a month left. And you're taking ice bath every day. Ice bath every day. Honestly, I'd, I'd, why would you put yourself through well, that? You know, I was going to sit there and say you need to get a life, but I yeah, I'll say that. But <laughs> no, the interesting thing is, it's the drink. You were right. I didn't. I wasn't drinking. But he doesn't even have a t- cup of tea or coffee. Now that I can't be doing. I've got to have my what cup of coffee. Have? Water. It's just it's water. Is that it? That's it. Why? <laughs> why not? Well, you could actually ask him why he's getting into an ice bath every day True. as well. Why? But there's supposed to be, and this is a theme in 2024, I think, m- loads of my mates are having these ice baths every day yep. and they're all filming themselves and they saying are, they are hundreds. Without yeah. doubt, without doubt, cold therapy is very, very good yeah. for lots of part of your your body, be it your skin, be it your man- mental side, certainly good for injuries and, and if you're training yeah, stuff, I get that. Yeah. It, it is good. I um, mean, I'm, sh- I'm sure like listeners should definitely look at what Anne-Marie Goss does rather than just listen to me, but I think I started doing it and the, f- the first benefit I got was, I really don't want to do this. I've done it and then you come out after you go, oh yeah, that's actually, like I've achieved something that, could have really done without today yeah, yeah but you've you've beaten your mind very early on especially if you do it in the morning you've beaten your mind in the morning so therefore everything else is going to feel a little bit easier and then you've got the all the benefits that come with it's good for your recovery if you do an exercise or it's good for your heart but for me it was definitely the mind bit first and then all of those benefits after and sleeping's supposed to be better without the booze and sleep's been better um my skin's been better, uh, my sort of, probably not my focus, but my sort of, my downs have been softer and my ups have been better because obviously mm. alcohol's a bit of a depressant, so yeah, we both get it, you get the beer for the next day and Badly. sometimes the day after or, you know, I could still be worrying about a Saturday night on a Tuesday morning at work, yeah. whereas I haven't had that feeling, which is quite nice. I think I think two things to remember and... and and I made this point. It doesn't have to be two, three, four, five degrees. Yeah. It can actually be anything that's lower than 40. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think like like anything, you know, you wouldn't enter, well, you shouldn't enter a marathon and just turn up on the day and try and run it. You, yeah. you build it up. Yeah, exactly. So I think, yes, cold showers to start you, and you're warm, yeah. just twist it. Just turn the knob around until you get it to cold. And if you're doing a minute and then yeah. two minutes then I think you're going to find the ice bath, something that you, you yeah. can build on. And most of the people that I know do it, when they don't do it, they miss it. Yeah, mm. I can definitely vouch for that. So, yeah. you know, and that's a bit like going to the gym, isn't it? I did, when I used to run a bit, if I didn't go for a run, I missed it. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I, it, I missed it because maybe of a work commitment, but yeah. I did miss it. It wasn't actually, it wasn't a guilt thing. I actually genuinely yeah. missed it. I missed the upside of it. So, and I think you're right, Finn. I think it's that world is something that's prominent on the radar yeah. at the moment. And, and listen, I think kids that are, are going to be born today are, are likely to live till they're 100. Yeah. So we, we are obviously doing something right. That's what I don't understand with governments. You know, I saw something the other day they're going to ban people having a large glass of wine in the pub. Well, two media. Yeah, so we're so we're all going to live. Yeah, on like the only is we got nowhere to live. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to live. Where we going? Go and live on, in, in a cave or yeah. under the arches or in a tent. Yeah, that's what I don't get. Yeah, yeah. I think with the I've come off. I did the half marathon in November, and then have just been three months solidly <laughs> eating and drinking to oblivion. 
Um, so, and you do notice the, the the way your mood drops, and so that's why I'm going to try and get into the ice baths. I might try it the first time tomorrow. I've, I've done it before, but I just I just don't see it. But has she written books? Because I thought she came across really well. She's she's put in a load of stuff together, I and mean, she does a lot on Instagram. Right. Um, you know, she. It was really interesting. Yeah. Really yeah. interesting. It's good to have a f- women on as well. She was your first woman. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, um, my business is always, it's interesting in the, and I've said this on some of the podcasts, that my business has been predominantly women that we've employed, not for any, mm. there wasn't any reason. We, we've, we've done a, a lot of sales of new property, yeah. and, and that was the way back in the day that it was ladies that worked. Still yeah. is. We're still a predominantly female-led business. You know, I've got a director that's a female. Yeah. Um, I don't, I said in the very first podcast, I don't look at any culture. I don't look at any, any it's not a, a race thing for me. It's not a, a sexism thing for me. You, you are, you, you're wrong or you're okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's testament for me with the people that I know that it's, it's a mixed background of all sorts. Yeah. I have to say, I was worried with Anna Marie Goff. I was worried about what you're going to wear with, I don't know, <laughs> how, whether it's swimming trunks. Well, I, had me, I didn't have my yeah, Speedos you. on underneath, <laughs> but fortunately, I didn't need to actually yeah. go that far. <laughs> Shout out to Dry Rope for <laughs> <laughs> yeah. saving us all there. that. Yeah. Was, yeah. But Mark Rampcash was another one. He was called, and I'm not a cricket fan by any stretch of imagination, although I want to get into it, and not playing, watching. Um, but he's he was nicknamed Blood Axe. At that middle sex, I think it was yeah. by his teammates, but he was the nicest man. Came across as he is it, again. He's just one of life's lovely people. Um, but it was interesting. I did ask him. I said to him that you know, at that time, if you'd if you'd had uh, somebody helping on the mental side of your cricket back in the day, was it his? He said you you know you would have been on the couch and you would have been considered as you'd lost your marbles kind yeah. of thing. Uh, so he didn't. Th- that kind of support wasn't around sportsmen then. Mm. Um, but he also said that he got into hot water were his words um, I think sort of 94 or 5 I can't remember the years that he mentioned um, and he, he got hold of himself and said right I'm going to have to behave a little bit better and control my temper and he had the worst <laughs> season <laughs> ever you know yes. and he said I needed to be on the edge I mean yeah. we, listen we're all passionate football fans Um you need certain players. You can see that it they does need go both ways. And, yeah. it, and it's it's you can't get to the top of any industry. I don't think unless you've got passion. Okay. Mm. And and some of us can actually deal with that differently to others. Yeah, I think that's a running theme throughout the passion that the guests have for their their industry. Was you look at DJ Spoonie and he was saying with um, in, in in his bedroom he just practiced and practiced and practiced. Yeah. And that was a running theme, that the passion that these guys have yeah. for what they do is... And that's not everyone is fortunate enough to be in a position where they're working in an industry they're passionate about. But when you've got that that opportunity, that it goes a long way. Yeah, I think it helps you excel as well, doesn't it? Because all of the guests that have come on are at the top of where whatever field they're in. And that's yeah. because that their sort of passion can probably drive them through when... Just kind of like obsessed with it, really. Yeah, yeah, you know, you have a you have a bad innings, or you have a bad game of football, or you have a bad planning c- committee go your way. That that that's not defining them. They're sort of they're rolling with the punches and using that passion to sort of push them through. When I think sometimes other people give sort of see that as a sign to go, Do you know what, I'll sat this in or. And have you that kept bothered. that passion throughout the difficult period that we're currently going through? Have you kept that passion for it? Or have there been times when, I remember, I think, uh, I can't remember who said it, but uh, you always have doubts in whatever you do. You, you'll always have doubts. But I th- is that passion still there? <clears throat> I, I said this in, the, in the one of the first podcasts, and I've said it another time, you know, and I think I'm, a, I'm more ambitious now than, than I've ever been. But... That might be on reflection. That might be driven because times are tough. You know, um, I had a guest on that's, that's not come out yet. or go into season two, and we was talking about cash flows. And you know, my business used to run a five-year cash flow. It now runs a three-month cash flow, and that's because 
there's so much uncertainty yeah. in the industry, in the country. Uh, and I think that passion, listen, people committed crimes for passion, you know, so I think it's it's one of those human being emotions that we have to try and control. Yeah. You know, Mark Rampakash made the point in his cricket when he controlled his passion and his aggression, he had a poor season. For me, sometimes that passion might at times, if I'm honest, affect me negatively in, in, my, in my emotional well-being because I get disappointed with myself because that didn't go the way I wanted it to or, you know, I could have dealt with that differently. So sometimes I just envy people that I just think have got just a nice life, just a... They're not relaxed. They're relaxed. They know yeah. what they're doing. They're very yeah. happy to do their bit. There's a lot to be said about that as well. There's no, there's no right or wrong. And and equally, talking about the the emotional well being, the people that have spoken to me privately about stuff. There isn't one mechanism that's the same for everyone. Mm. You know, the the people I've had on to talk about emotional well being, I'm I've been um, fishing for the want of a better word to find out what mechanisms they use. You know, I think when Spoonie was on, I said to him, you know, what do you do? And he said, you know, one of his, his escapisms is to go and put some music on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, some people find it going to get their rod out and sit on a fishing bank. Some people will go f in a cold tub and go f for a run. Yeah. There's no, there's no set pattern. But I think passion, if it's channeled in, into the wrong part of your daily routine and your mind, can be negative. Yeah, sure. I think your interests are maybe golf. I don't think golf's that relaxing personally because I'm not very good at it. But football's certainly not a relaxing sport to watch because you are passionate about that. So it is just getting a hobby that you can relax with, like maybe fishing or something like that, that that you can switch off doing. It, it, it's right what you say. I mean, golf at times has has driven me around the bend, um, and actually, I can't watch foot. I can't watch Arsenal. On TV, yeah. I, I I'm, if I'm at the game, yeah. I can cope. Yeah. When I'm not at the game, then yeah. then I it it'll be on somewhere in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm only going in the room when I hear yeah. either a cheer or a, a groan. Yeah, yeah. I, it's it's being detached from it. Yeah, that's exactly the same as my dad. He goes out. We've got a supporters club that we go to, and he will go out for the last five minutes because he can't watch that last five yeah. minutes of the game because he sees himself as a bad omen. But yeah, it's just it's, it's not crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, the fact that they're like 700 miles away <laughs> yeah. and you have got no influence whatsoever and it's actually but just because you, you, you put your right trainer on instead of your left one first, yeah, they're yeah. going to lose 1-0. But yeah, on yeah. the flip it's side, that if you were there in Glasgow or in North London, that you cheering you. in amongst 60,000 people, you'd be the difference that's going to score the, the winning goal. Yeah. It, it, it works both ways. It the doesn't mind, make sense. The mind, when we've got things that we love and we care about, the mind plays some yeah. very, very strange, I'm not going to say tricks, but tricks. Yeah. Mm. So what's your aims? What would you like to improve upon? Or is there anything you'd like to do differently for season two? I know you've started to record some episodes, but... Um I think, look, listen, it's, you know, when we sat down, I, I said that if one person benefited from this, it would have been a success. So I'm going to say it's a success. Yeah. Because I know for a fact that it's not one, there's numerous peoples uh, that have reached out to to me and then said that my my opening up and honesty about the emotional challenges I have has, has, has been relatable to them, albeit differently in some way. Yep. So that's good. Um, I've also had a few charities reach out and say, thank you for the mention. Yep. Yeah, we are, we are under pressure. Uh, anything you can do to to get some recognition for us out there, we're under pressure. So that's a good. Um, the leaders I've had on in the industry have been frank, honest, open, but constructive. Yeah, yeah very definitely. constructive. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm I'm disappointed that more of the industry haven't reached out to actually I don't know, moan at me. Mm. You know, say I don't agree, or it's a challenge. Just you know, or or to actually say this is good. This is the right way to go, and and, and you know, and we we need those people to come on and talk to us. Um, and I'm sure you know there there'll be some people that have just not enjoyed it and don't listen to us at all. 
So I don't think so. I've, uh, listen, I'm on it. Well, someone's going to enjoy <laughs> it. As long as that's free, <laughs> that's right. exactly. I'm happy. Well, that's free, here, so who, who's uh, problem? Exactly. We'll move on, yeah, it's their fault. Yeah, yeah exactly. They're, they're yeah. There's nobody watching. <laughs> Blame it's them. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Blame no, I thought it was a really good, and considering how difficult it is to sit to to talk to people. Um, about the those issues as well, I, th- I just thought it came across as, and I always go out walking when listening to my podcasts, um, and I think nobody likes to listen to a podcast they feel uncomfortable listening to yep. because you just turn it off straight away. Whether that's because the hosts are awkward or the issues are too well, much. Other than you two, I've not had anyone that's been awkward. No, that's it exactly. Um, but I think I, I've never felt that from you. I think you're, you're natural, as they say in the industry. I think. Is that what they say? Yeah. I've had a load of people call me differently. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to tell you. <laughs> natural, it didn't start with an N either. <laughs> <laughs> W's and T's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, those kind of words, yeah, but no. But you're getting more sports people on? We are. Um, uh, listen, it is humbling. Uh, and I use that again. Uh, I'm really surprised the people that have said, yes, they're going to come on. You know, we've got... We still got some musicians to come. We got some actors to come, rugby players, footballers, and and these are people that would have trust me. They would have said they can't make it. Yeah, they would have said it's a conflict of interest. Whatever they they could have made an excuse. Got out of they it. said they're going to come. They're busy, busy people. Um, we've got some amazing people coming on in series two. We, I'm, I'm conscious it's a serious podcast, but. I don't want it to be miserable. Yep. Um, so getting that balance. I've got to look at that balance. Yeah, you've got to have balance. a laugh with it. Um, and if it is too serious, well, that's my guest's fault and I'm not taking that's it. <laughs> blame, but, um, no, we do want to try and make it a bit more enjoyable, but we want to highlight stuff. It's, it's a balancing act. Yeah. And and we're organic. Yeah. I think that's it's a natural... Yeah. You know, it's we're learning on the job. What we're talking about, we're not learning on the job because yeah. the people we're having that come on are skilled. They are good yeah. in their profession, be it Anna, be it Mark, be it yeah. Peter Truscott. You know, they are good at what they do, yeah. be it Matt Fleming, be it Chris Crook. Mm. You know, they are all good at what they do. They're all experts in their field, yeah. And so we don't have to worry about that bit. But whether or not we can make it enjoyable. The, 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 the views on all of the platforms are going up. That's what you can ask for. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not allowed to mention too many numbers because Coral will turn me off, but I'm going to mention it. 130-odd <laughs> thousand have seen the first six episodes in the various yeah. platforms that we use. Yeah, that's impressive. That's very impressive. Um, that is brilliant. You know, it, somebody said to me in the beginning, what do you think? And I said, I don't know. I've got no idea. I'm a dinosaur. I don't know. If you said to me 2,000, I would have been amazed. Yeah. I, I go back to what I say, you know, Blighty Talks Bricks is the title. They haven't come on to listen to me. Yeah. They're coming on to listen to what yeah. these experts, male, female, have got to say. And hopefully if ET lands, yeah. he okay. can come on as well. And what a theme song, by the way. Yep. That well, is world class. <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> That's brilliant. Nothing to do with that. that it's very catchy. That's the one thing you want, um, that catchy theme song. And yeah, I'll just I'll listen to it for that. Well, look, guys, um, you know how important you two are to me. Um, You do give me the confidence. You do give me the inspiration. You are part of why we're on this journey, and it's always lovely to spend time in your company, and I'm lucky enough to be able to do that on a regular basis, but it's been lovely to have you on. Have you got... Is there any more questions you want to throw at me? Um, No, we've got something that we'd like to present. We can get Paul, the um, (laughs) production manager. That is... Look at how impressive that is. (laughs) 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 That's... everyone else's. That's of mine. (laughs) That Guys, is no, thank you very much. You've been, it's been absolutely brilliant, and I'm looking forward to getting stuck yep. into that. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're gonna we're gonna call it a wrap. But viewers, listeners, um, if you want a bit of cake, uh, we'll we'll package it up and send it That's off it. to you. But um, it's gonna be valuable one day. That's <laughs> it. very valuable. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for listening. It, with, without you guys listening and, and watching, there isn't anything for us to talk about. We need you. We need you to spread the word because 
if you've been if you've been on the journey with us, you'll know what the passion is. You know what we're about. Um, thank you very much for your time. Uh, safe, be safe. Look after yourselves, and I look forward to seeing you in season two. Uh, Harry, Finn, thank you very much, guys. Lovely you. to see you. All the best.